Good evening and welcome to this longest night service. On behalf of the Presbytery of Western New York, I'd like to thank you for joining us. We have gathered pastors and leaders from East and West and North and South to be part of this virtual service. In the midst of bustle and joy, let's slow down, acknowledge our pain and sadness and loss. There will be a time for you to share your prayers and to light candles in memory of those you have lost. Please, in the next few minutes during a musical piece, gather candles, papers, and pens so that you have them on hand. You will also be able to write names into the chat box later. We also ask that everyone please stay muted. Today was the shortest day and tonight will be the longest night of the year. At noon, if you had glimpsed your shadow, it too would have been the longest one all year. While we're in the midst of a season of great joy and light for many with us in this virtual room and in this world, it feels more like a season of great darkness and shadows. Presbyterian theologian Anne Lamott writes, Faith includes noticing the mess, the emptiness and discomfort, and letting it be there until some light returns. We hope this time will bring some light into your life. Our Advent candles speak to us of the light of the world. While others are experiencing the light of hope, joy, peace, and love, we may feel as though our hope has gone, our peace extinguished, our joy snuffed out, and love vanished. Yet we don't have to be alone in our darkness tonight. We're here together. And we can honestly be here. For God has promised to meet us and welcomes us just as we are. Let us pray. God, we bring to you our grief, our own and the grief of others in the world. Although we may know you are with us as much in the dark as in the light, we admit we often feel left in the dark, alone, angry, fearful. 
Remind us tonight, as you have reminded all people through all ages, that you are Emmanuel, God with us. You join us and continue loving us in our loneliness, anger, and fear. May we allow you to be with us, to be our provider, healer, comforter, and friend in our darkest of times. Amen. Nature and mystery join and invite us to recognize our hopeful longing for the return of the sun and the birth of the word made flesh. The days grow shorter and colder and the nights long. Try as we may, we cannot fully dismiss the fundamental feelings that lie deep at our roots, a mixture of feelings dark and sweet. Gertrude Moore Nelson to dance with God.
C.S. Lewis wrote, no one ever told me that grief felt so like fear. Let us hear these voices from scripture. Cried the psalmist, my tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O oh my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to the Holy One, who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me.
cried Jeremiah, peace has been stripped away and I have forgotten what prosperity is. I cry out, my splendor is gone. Everything I had hoped for from the Lord is lost. Lamentations 3, 17 to 18. Continuing in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 through 24. Through his tears, he said, yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance, therefore I will hope in him. Thank you. 
Sister Joyce Rupp reminds us, remember you have a divine light within you that will never go out. Jesus from the cross, when darkness covered the land, cried out with the words of Psalm 22, verse 1, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And from John 14, to his friends soon to be frightened and full of tears, he said, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you, I'm going away, but I will come back to you again.
Hear these words from John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And in the end, says the book of Revelation, he will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Revelation 21, verse 4.
I would like to invite you to join in a time of guided meditation. I invite you to close your eyes, to breathe deeply, quietly, restfully. As I guide your thinking and imagination in this simple prayer, let your mind and your heart go wherever it will, following my instructions. Let this be a time for you to imagine that Jesus truly is Emmanuel, God with you right now. Closing your eyes, Imagine Jesus coming into this room. He sees you and makes his way over to you. Notice how Jesus chooses to sit, stand, or kneel. What is it that he wants to offer you right now? Simply allow him to be with you however he chooses. Whether words, a facial expression, a gesture, or simply his presence, allow yourself to be with Jesus in the silence for a moment, and then I will say, Amen. Amen.
is the day of our radiance excelling, death's dreaded darkness forever dispelling. Christ is coming soon, Christ is coming soon. I invite you now to prepare for the darkness and for the light. You will be invited to sit for a time in darkness and silence, acknowledging your loss, your separation, your confusion, or that which is being experienced by others. The darkness and silence may feel a little uncomfortable at first. Darkness and silence can be scary no matter what our age. Yet it is our prayer tonight that we can begin to feel the silence as God's invitation to rest and be still. And we can begin to experience the darkness around us as the embrace of God, a God who is present, maybe even more powerfully in our pain, and a God who promises that it will not be dark forever. Tomorrow, there will be just a little more light than today. You may not have noticed, but slowly, spring will come again. May it be the same way as God brings the light of hope into your life, into our world. After a time of silence and darkness, we invite everyone to light a candle, which represents the presence of Christ. You are then invited, when ready, to light your own candle on behalf of yourself or someone else. You may wish to write down your sadness or what you're longing for and put it in a special place, such as your home worship space. We invite you to write names into the chat box and to pray for all the names you read there. Take the time and space you need. We invite you to enter into the darkness, embrace it, encourage it, notice something new. We encourage you to turn off the lights and sit in silent darkness for a minute. Don't hurry. You might even linger. Notice your feelings, even if they are uncomfortable. Sit with them and let them pass. Embrace the moment, even if it is awkward.
from the Devotions for Advent Mosaic Bible. But when tragedy, depression, or loneliness steals your joy, you could almost resent the hope that others have. It can be comforting to rely on the one who gives us hope, even when the light of hope doesn't seem to penetrate our temporary darkness. The light of Christ shines in the world, and in him there is no darkness at all. And as we light this candle together, I invite you to search the sadness and darkness of your heart, lifting up those you've loved and lost, sharing them with us on the chat, or writing it down in a journal, or simply just praying together. Let us light this candle together, knowing that the light of Christ shines in us, filling us with his love and comfort and strength during this time. May the grace of the night's stillness be mine. May the grace of the moon's guidance be mine. May the grace of heaven's vastness be mine. To renew my soul in sleep, to enlighten my dreams in the night, to open my spirit to eternity until the angels of light awaken me, until the morning angels awaken me. Amen. Um.